Hi hey there, me, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter. So I'm going to try this the second time around. Didn't like it the first time, so we're going to try this again. No, I mean the video, not the stroke. I'm not planning on a new stroke. So let's just say a shout out to a couple people that have joined the channel recently. Uh, that being uh, Claire Massey, thank you for joining. Uh, then there is Beth G. Uh, apparently you're an RN. Um, and... Uh, you also are stroke certified. Thank you. I'm going to do a uh, response to comments and questions probably tomorrow. We'll get into that in specifics. And then Brenda Howard, thank you again for joining. So Brenda, Claire, and Beth, thank you. Um, I have checked out your channels. When anyone joins, I do check out to see kind of what you're about. If you're a content creator, just a viewer, whatever. Uh, and if you're not creating content, that's okay by me. Um, that being said, I think I'm, again, typically speaking, the lowest count channel subscriber base that you're subscribing to, and thank you for joining this Married Little Band. Um, now, so Friday the 21st was nine months since my stroke. I've been back to work for almost three months. It'll be three months at the end of this month, and I'll do a video about three months back to work. Um, <clears throat> so it's been nine months since I had the most terrifying shitty day that you're ever going to get to experience. Um, I've seen more than my fair share of doctor's appointments I would ever care to see in such a short period of time. Between my neurologist, my GP, I went for a cardiac stress test last week. Um, that turned out excellent, so that's okay. Uh, my physiotherapist, she's not a doctor, but still my physiotherapist, I saw her for four months straight. My therapist, therapist, who's a wonderful lady. Um, the advantage of having a stroke is you get to see a whole lot of more of the people in your neighborhood. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, there are people you may not want to have to see, but that kind of comes along free with the stroke. So, what have I learned in nine months? What have I learned? Um, a lot of things. One, that you can't do this on your own, right? Um, two, that my dad has watched my videos, and sorry, Dad, my hair is a bit messed up right now, so, you know, um, I'll fix it for you there. That might be better. There we go. Um, You learn a lot about yourself because there's periods of time after your stroke you're going to end up either feeling helpless um, because you're not able to do things or you're actually helpless because you're not able to do things. Case in point, socks, shoes. I still have difficulty putting on so socks sometimes. I still have difficulty tying my shoes or even putting them on sometimes. So I occasionally will have to ask for help to put on socks and shoes. Don't like it, but it's a thing. I, I just have to accept it. It's part of my current new normal. Does that mean that's my going to be everyday new normal? No, it, it doesn't. Um, will one day I master the sock donning and doffing? Yeah, hopefully. Will I master the putting on shoes and actually being able to tie them up regularly without wanting to fall down and onto the floor? Yeah, hopefully again, that'll happen. Um, but unfortunately right now, my new normal indicates that some days socks are a challenge and some days tying shoes, if not every day, tying shoes can be a ridiculous challenge. There's nothing I can do about that. Not a thing. Um, you learn a lot about you know, just how to ask for help. Right? You learn a lot about who's willing to help. You learn a lot about who's really going to want to be there. Um, the one, the one true thing about having a stroke is you figure out fairly quickly who's actually going to step up and be counted, right, and actually have your back, and who is just someone that's like a placeholder in your life. You know, someone that you, you talk to every day, you think as a friend, but they really don't. 
amount to much when you need them. For seed, it's not an uncommon thing when you pedestal. It's really not. Um, there is a definitive sense of social isolation after a stroke, and people will treat you differently after a stroke. There's not much you can do about that. I'm going through that right now. I'm going to do a video about uh, about that probably in a week or two. I just middle of formulating how to do that. Um. But really, ultimately, what it comes down to is you can't control how other people are going to react. You can only really control how you are going to interact with them. And I'm of the philosophy that if you really didn't want to take the effort to hang around and be there for the bad days, I really don't need to take the effort to make sure that you're there for the good days. It's kind of where I'm at. Uh, I know some people might consider that hobbling. Or unfair to people, maybe. I really don't know how they consider it. But ultimately, I really don't care. Um, you either chose to be there or not. And I don't really want to have to take the time to explain nine months in a 16-sentence conversation. Because I can't. I've realized that there are going to be very great days, which days that are amazing and I, I've come to realize there are going to be days that are absolutely shitty and there's nothing you can do about that right you just have to accept the fact that if you're having a great day today's a great day and just celebrate the fact that you're having a great day because tomorrow could be the exact same day all over again or that great day could quickly turn into a relatively shitty day due to something completely outside of your control like an air horn, or fluorescent lights, or whatever the case may be. Because of having had a stroke, you learn your limitations. Right? You're going to learn your new limitations. You're going to learn what your new limitations look like versus your old limitations. And in some cases, they may be very similar. In other cases, they may be a very large large deficit between the two so you're gonna have to embrace and accept your new limitations and your new normal now again does that mean that's gonna be your new normal forever maybe maybe not because the only true piece of certainty with stroke recovery rehabilitation and reintegration is uncertainty there is no hard and fast rule for stroke there's no hard and fast rule for stroke recovery. Every stroke is a unique individual event uh, to a, a unique individual and how that individual responds to their stroke is is its own animal. You know? So, I can't give you definitive timelines. I can't give you definitive benchmarks. I can't give you anything in the way of you know, uh, if you have a stroke 16 days after your stroke, this is going to happen. And then 32 days after your stroke, that'll happen. And by the 96th day, this will happen. Because there is no definitive stroke recovery timeline. There are no definitive stroke recovery benchmarks. Uh, and every stroke is essentially a unique event to you, a unique individual and how they choose to respond to the stroke and its impact on their life is up to that individual. What I can say to that is this. I'm not into platitudes. I've never been into platitudes. Um, it's not something I do well. Um, I've always been a kind of reality-based individual. If you've had a stroke and you choose not to work, towards a goal, you are going to choose not wanting to get better, right? not wanting to embrace recovery, not wanting to be able to challenge yourself, not wanting to be able to get back to a closer facsimile of what your old normal looked like. Right? And, I, and I realize how that might sound. 
I, I'm, I'm cognizant of how that might sound, but I'm putting the emphasis on the individual. And that's exactly where it needs to be. Your physiotherapist can only do so much of that work. Um, your occupational therapist can only do so much of that work. Your speech and language pathologist can only do so much of that work. Your therapist therapist, so your, your, your um, psychotherapist, your psychiatrist, your psychologist, they can only do so much of that work. Ultimately, you have to want to be in it to win it. And if you're not switched on and you're not engaged and your head's not on the swivel, right, you're going to drop the ball. And I know it's it's smug of me to say the only easy on the only easy day was yesterday and the only better day will be tomorrow. But that is the reality of a stroke, right? You are going to have some of the shittiest days known to mankind, right? You are literally going to, you know, hate the fact that you've been in bed three days in a row. You're weak, you're fatigued, you're tired, and just drinking soup out of a cup is exhausting but that's neuro fatigue right um, you're going to be upset with the fact that you literally just slept the last 36 hours away you're going to be frustrated that you've been up for 18 hours and you can't sleep right? again these are all normal for a stroke however that being said if you choose to work towards small goals, if you choose to accept the fact that your goals now are not time bound, um, they're more target bound, meaning on a stroke recovery timeline, you're not so much worried about how long it takes to get to a goal. You're worried about the goal itself. What is my target, right? You may get there in three weeks. You may not get there for three years but ultimately you have a goal you find a way to get to that goal and you maintain the effort you maintain the exercise you maintain your willingness to get to the goal and as long as you maintain that goal and you maintain your willingness to get there eventually you will get to your goal the problem is in a post-stroke world there are many hurdles, there are many stumbles, there are many challenges, and not all of them can be easily predicted, and not all, not all of them can be easily overcome, but any obstacle that you encounter can be breached. You just have to find a way to do it. And that's sort of the attitude I've had throughout this entire event. Um, find a way to find the obstacle, right? And you don't have to find them some days because they just magically show up. Um, Examine the obstacle, right? Determine if it's one you really need to engage or not. Um, and if you don't have to play, or play on that obstacle, just go around it. No biggie. If it's one you definitely need to surmount and you've got to overcome that obstacle, you are you can either go around it, you can go over it, you can go under it, you can go through it. But ultimately, you've got to get through that obstacle to get to your objective. And that could be something as simple as learning how to read again. You know? That could be something as simple as learning how to hold a knife again to cut food. That could be something as simple as learning how to climb up and down stairs. Right? Um, stairs, depending on the type of staircase it is, some stairs still do scare me. Um, especially on like those really steep old Victorian staircases that are rather large and huge and on a really ridiculous incline. Uh, and so... That's not to say that there are going to be discouraging days, because there will be. But ultimately, regardless of how bad the day was yesterday, you've got to be willing to get back up, get back out, get back at it, and do it again. right? And I'm a bit of a stubborn goat, and I will admit that right off the hop. Um, in fact, some people have told me it's because of my stubbornness that I've been successful with my post-stroke recovery um, because I, I have goals and I'm very this is an anomia this is me trying to find the right word so this is not anomia um, very steadfast in achieving those goals 
Um, I'm not willing to compromise to achieve my goals. Um, you are either beside me, supporting me, or you're behind me, supporting me. Because if you're in front of me, you're going to become an obstacle, and obstacles get breached. And that's sort of where I'm at with this, and that's sort of where I've been always with this. Um, and that being said, everyone that's had a stroke is going to encounter their own obstacles, and those obstacles are going to be unique to the individual, just like they were unique to the stroke. One skill I'm still trying to learn is editing, right? Um, now, I'm back to work, so eventually I will be able to afford a slightly better camera than the one that's built into this laptop. Um, and at that point, once I get a better video source um, and a better microphone, I can start editing the videos. And that'll improve my production content or quality. But that being said, that's one obstacle I have yet to get over with, and that's more of a financial obstacle. And also not looking for money. No, no, no. So that being said, if you haven't a like, we've been watching the last nine months. Um, please like, share, subscribe, point the channel out to someone if they're going through their own post stroke journey or supporting someone going through uh, the post stroke journey with a loved one. And if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you the signs or symptoms of the stroke, uh, that being someone who appears to be immediately befuddled, confused, um, you know, they can't maintain their own balance, someone who's having vision problems, they, they can't see out of one eye, they see grayscale, they see just out of a little dot of the world, um, someone that has facial droop, one side of their face is visually drooping, which may or may not include drooling, because I was drooling. Um, they have the inability to raise both arms equally effectively or at all. They can't smile equally effectively or at all. They have slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate order usage for situation or context. Please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.